in metal fabrication, working with sheet metal, boiler making, pipe fitting, steam fitting, even concrete formwork if you have a curved piece of footing or a curved wall. The following question arises, how long is it? How long is the metal that went into this one? How long is this piece of pipe? Or if you have a curved wall or footing for concrete formwork, how long is it? And where do you measure that length? You need the length of it in case of concrete to do your volume calculation, length times width times height. But just before you can enter the first number, how long is a curved anything? Curved metal, curved anything. I just measured with this paper tape here, ever handy, the inside length on this metal surface here and it's 35 centimeters and then I measured it on the outside and it's 38 centimeters mm, no the paper tape does not stretch an extra 3 centimeters out that's an inch and a quarter it doesn't have that much of a give in it, it the outside actually is 3 centimeters longer or this pipe same on this pipe. Here, I'll show you. If I measure the length along the inside with this tape that I have these stick tapes on and uh, start, at the, start at the end. There we go, with the zero meticulously lining up and just working my way along and taping it to it along the middle here meticulously just like so so it's nice and tight against it there's my next one and somewhere there and then the last one almost in a straight line there we go so there's the end of it how about 472 millimeters Okay, let's go with 472. There, the tape is nice and flat against. It's just hard to hold it together and fit it in your picture. Nice and flat along the pipe. There, all along. Okay, then if I measure this along the outside, let's see, what do we have? Let's see, line it up with the zero there. And you can, you know. Try and do the same at home. Just grab some kind of construction garbage from the dumpster, like I did. Then take a look and see for yourself. There, if I keep taping it on, see it's pretty uniform. And uh, I get to the end of the tape. What do I see? 495 millimeters. See, this tape is not apparently not out 23 millimeters. That's like an inch. The tape did not buckle an inch between measurements or didn't stretch an inch between measurements. The outside is really an inch longer than the inside. So you might be thinking at this point, okay, the outside, there, sorry, the outside was 495. The inside, the length of the inside was 472. So the difference is uh, three there and 23 millimeters. That's, a, that's an inch, kind of close. And uh, so the actual length of the pipe, therefore, why don't we just split the difference and uh, go to the exact middle and either measure exactly along the middle of the pipe here, which is, well, good luck with that, holding the tape on edge and just bending it that way but uh, you might want to go well half of 23 is uh, half of 20 is 10 half of 3 is 1.5 so 11.5 would be the half of it and then we just add that 11 and a half to that 475 so that 472 so we come up with 480 three and a half millimeter. How about that? How's that for length? Well, 
that's a, that's a good approximation, but is incorrect as well. For most of your treats calculations, however, you're going to do something like that. And particularly for the curved sections here, now come back to the table. Particularly for the curved section, you're going to be using the concepts of mean radius or mean diameter. I'm just eyeballing where the turn starts or the bend starts on this one. I'm just trying to mark it with this whiteboard marker on the pipe. It kind of works there, dark enough, you can see. So, the center of this circle here is somewhere here and your inside radius extends now that would be your inside radius from the middle of the circle to the inside edge of this pipe here there that would be your inside radius and here is your oopsie, here is your 90 degree turn and if I draw a line of the outside there we have the outside there then the outside radius would go all the way to the outside but if we measured along the middle of the pipe there we would determine the length along the middle we would be measuring along the mean radius typically abbreviated as MR and outside radius is OR Okay. That would be a pretty close approximation to figuring out the actual length of the pipe, which was approximated to be 483 and a half millimeters. So it's a measurement taken along the mean radius. That's nice, but like I said, it's it's inaccurate. If you have something bigger and wider than this pipe, it's, it's going to be out. I'll show you how and why I have this foam here. For example, in a curved wall, in a concrete formwork where, uh, or, or a footing, uh, where uh, the concrete formwork is not this thin, not this thin, you know, it's this wide or even wider, or an 8 inch wall, something like that. Now, what I have here on this foam is its midsection marked with these square grids, 1 inch by 1 inch square grids. And when I bend the foam, just like I bend pipe to any curvature, let's go with a 90 degree curvature. There. That's going to be my helping hand there. You can see that the foam, the ends, are unaffected here. And uh, that's why they are not marked either. And the foam compresses along the inside there. You can see how the grid system distorts there. It's still one inch in this direction because the foam is four inches this way. So it's still one inch here, but the foam cells compress here along the inside greatly. And uh, by greatly I mean the length now on a 90 degree band is four inches. I just measured it. The length along the outside also changes it doesn't stay 8 inches it was 8 inches when it was straight not the case anymore so if I put this tape on it when it is straight you can see the zero is there at the beginning and there is my 8 inch line at the end and if I just bend the foam to 90 degrees just like so you can see that the length of the foam is nine and a half inches so the foam stretches out along the outside an additional inch and a half. We know that it was eight inches long when we started and now it's nine and a half. Along the inside corner here it's four. It's got to be five somewhere here, six somewhere here, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half. Okay, that makes sense. So the question is not how long is this foam, but instead if, if go, going 50-50, splitting the difference and going with a mean radius is inaccurate, what is accurate? I'll show you. If I measured exactly 
along the midline where this this line is you know it's two inches from here and two inches from here on from both faces if I measure the length along that face there I know if you can see the small numbers on the tape from uh, from the camera there but I placed the tape accurately to along the midline on a 90 degree band and if I pinch the tape here where the end is then I was covering that number with my thumb there that's a 7 inch mark here let me show you again if I go and place the tape exactly to the midline of this foam that number here is the 7 inch that's a 7 inch mark okay it's not 8 inches 8 inch length the the axis of neutrality is further out on the foam because it's four inches here it's seven inches here so eight will be just a little further out somewhere about there is looking like eight inches if I turn it just a little bit like so so you can take a look at it where the tape actually runs it's eight inches somewhere there the axis of neutrality is approximately 60% from the inside and 40% from the outside. So going 50-50 is approximate enough and is, is close enough with small stuff, small pipes and, uh, and uh, relatively thin metal, 5 millimeters is kind of thin. Not for a sheet metal worker, but actually the accurate the most accurate measurement is produced when instead of a mean radius you calculate this radius to be 60% away from the inside surface or 40% away from the outside surface that's the radius you need to work with for thicker chunkier wider materials and uh, that's the mean radius mean diameter and mean circumference that you need to work with